in my little opening statement, I must say that when PAHO WHO would have announced COVID-19 a pandemic, it sent the world a shockwave. And countries, developing countries like Guyana, would have in a, been an ace to look for items that are today delivered to us. Today, we might not have had all of these equipment, but it is a pleasure to receive these items, which are critical to proper health care in Guyana. Without going any further, I will, Dr. Alice Andre, sorry, I didn't see by the back of me. So I will ask Dr. Alexandre to give a little welcoming speech since PAHO WHO, which is one of our partners, would have played a significant role in ensuring that we have these items in the country. So it's a really a continuous honor and a pleasure for PAHO to continue supporting the country in this response to COVID-19 here. Um, uh, this uh, handing over that we are doing today is mainly supporting the clinical aspect of, uh, of the disease, while PAHO is also supporting the prevention and control of the disease from a public health perspective. So we're pleased to be working with the Indian High Commission for us, uh, who is supporting also this response. Um, some of the items that are a given the Indian High Commission has, has provided funds to allow PAHO to support the ministry with uh, uh, those items. And we look forward to continue uh, this uh, collaboration, uh, with, which I will call this trilateral collaboration with, uh, with the ministry. So it will be our pleasure to continue to help the ministry and to, work, to move forward uh, to get this disease behind us. But in the meantime, let's continue to do everything that we can to prevent uh, ourselves from getting infected. Thank you. It is indeed a momentous occasion. And I would say that India and Guyana, we have had a long, long, long relationship. And I think the help that we are getting now will be felt throughout Guyana. At a ceremony not so long ago, honorable ministers compared the number of functioning pieces of equipment we have with the numbers that we'll be receiving. And it, the percentages are in the hundreds. So on behalf of the people of Guyana, especially in the regions, because COVID is throughout the country, uh, I would preempt minister in saying <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you to the government. Georgetown Public Hospital, we're really happy to today be receiving this equipment. It is our belief that it's going to help us the treating of the patients. As you know, we, are, we have the only um, isolation intensive care unit, which caters for the very ill patients. And um, I can tell you that the doctors have been doing a tremendous, doctors and nurses, and other medical professionals have been doing a tremendous job with the limited resources that we have. This certainly, to help us, and I can assure you, sir, that we are going to utilize it with care, with caution, and ensure that it is available to provide the best care for the guys. Thank you, sir. Today, as Dr. Made was mentioning, is a momentous occasion. Today, we are formally handing over the components which were procured under the Indian government's one million U.S. dollars aid under the COVID prevention, which Government of India sanctioned. We must be thankful to PAHO and uh, uh, the UNDP for coordinating with us to procure these for the Government of Guyana. This contribution includes 29 ventilators, PPEs, uh, I think hundreds of, uh, sorry, thousands of uh, gloves and masks and uh, 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 sanitizers, etc. And of course, here we have uh, uh, the 30,000 tablets of hydroxychloroquine, which is one of the vi most vital components of coronavirus treatment back home in India and many countries across the world. 
today india is recognized as a development partner a trustable development partner and at the same time due, due to its expertise in the healthcare and the pharma sector which is now being more than adequately recognized across the world during this epidemic i think the help that india is extending under prime minister modi's leadership across the world is being widely appreciated prime minister modi started this journey way back in april when he started talking to various heads of states and governments and then following that discussion he concluded that india should work with all its developmental partners its friends across the world and today india is assisting over 100 countries across the world with not only financial aid but also supplies emergency medicine supplies the uh, ventilators the protective equipment etc of course paracetamol and hydroxychloroquine are two vital components of this aid that we have given across the world even the usa took i, I don't know how many millions of tablets of hydroxychloroquine from india and this was demonstrable proof that india's pharma has come of age today indian vaccine producers are working actively on three main vaccines the first vaccine is called covi shield which is a being uh, manufactured by the well known serum institute of india which apparently produces over 50% of the world's uh, free distribution of vaccines uh, this is a vaccine which is being produced jointly between the oxford university and astrazeneca pharma but it will be manufactured in india by serum institute it's called covi shield it's in the third phase of trials as we speak the second vaccine is called as covaxin which is a indigenous vaccine being produced by a company called bharat biotech in india along with uh, the indian council for medical research and the national institute of virology in pune in india this is in the second phase of trials and we have a couple of other contenders also so all said and done the expectation is that we could be seeing a vaccine produced in mass numbers in india by the first quarter of 2021 india is also keeping in mind that it will have to fulfill a commitment to its other developmental partners across the world and could supply some part of this uh, production of vaccines and share it with the developing world as i was telling you earlier the healthcare and pharma industry along with the uh associated industry are now in running in full flow in fact some companies are running over 200% capacity producing over time the protective equipment the ppes the masks the sanitizers etc which are now being shipped across the world although india with a population of 1.4 billion has about 3.6 million cases as we speak but out of this only about 750000 are active cases which translates to about 77% recovery and the death rate in india is about 1.6% which is way below the world average of 3.6% the economic effects are there to see but at the end of the day as they say health is wealth if you survive the pandemic you will survive you will live to fight another day and you will again rebuild the economy we are also looking at active collaboration with uh, the government of guyana as part of our 17.5 million us dollars uh, line of credit to upgrade the three hospitals the regional hospitals in west demarara in uh, sadi and bartika and i look forward to working with the honorable minister and his colleagues in the ministry to uh, faster execution of this uh, project we know that this is a priority area and this line of credit was sanctioned about 5 and a half to 6 year, uh, years ago and we will work through the processes but ensure that the work is done well quality and time bound india as dr made was mentioning and uh, the ps was mentioning uh, the relationship i think it uh, is not 5 decades old it's about 2 centuries old mm-hmm. and for us you know uh, guyana is ha- not is 
was, is and will be a partner. We look upon Guyana as a strategic friend and at the same time we believe that Guyana has in, in it to progress further and whatever it needs, be it capacity building, skills development, even in the health sector, we have many training programs which I have already briefed the Honorable Minister. I hope that once this COVID epidemic is done and our training courses restart, we will be able to work closer with the government of Guyana to provide the skilled manpower that this country badly needs. And being a doctor myself, I fully understand the importance of these uh, ventilators as the CEO of GPHC was mentioning. It's a welcome step that not only GPHC will have this, but I understand that some of this donation would also be uh, sent to the regions. And uh, as they say, uh, back home in India, the cities or maybe New Delhi doesn't make India. It's the rural component which actually, you know, uh, forms a firm part of India. So the same thing applies in Guyana also. Georgetown is not Guyana. Mm -hmm. So that is being featured here and I appreciate the government of Guyana for having taken this step to distribute these uh, uh, donations e uh, to all the regions. And we look forward to working very closely, Honorable Minister. Thank you for this opportunity. And it's indeed a great privilege for me to be part of this exercise of the Government of India to work closely with our partners. Thank you. We are extremely pleased to receive, on behalf of the Government of Guyana, uh, this timely donation. And I think, um, while uh, High Commissioner was speaking, there are two components here. One is the, uh, the things that we would have procured through PAHO that has worked approximately one million US dollars. And that includes the PPEs, the equipment such as the ventilators that we have acquired. And in addition to that one million dollar, we have uh, now gotten an, another donation and that is these medication of hydroxychloroquine. So now it's more than a million. <laughs> um, so I want to thank High Commissioner for his, uh, and the government of India for this wonderful gesture. As you know, with the updates that we have been giving uh, about our actions and responses to the pandemic, one of the critical areas that we have is really addressing hospitalized patients. And the Georgetown Hospital has been at the forefront of this response. They have a transition ward, they have uh, infectious ICU, where a lot of our COVID uh, critical patients would go. And therefore, they need to have the right environment and equipment if they would be able to deliver the kind of care uh, that they would like to deliver. They have lots of good doctors and high competence in that unit, but sometimes one of the restraining factors or constraining factors has been that we didn't have enough of the equipment. And we are extremely pleased that today you're helping us to fill that gap. And with the, um, with the donation of these ventilators, I'm sure for the patients who would need them, that this would really um, you know, some, often we, we use a cliche to say that this is a life-saving measure, mm -hmm. but in this instance, it really uh, would be a life-saving measure. So we want to uh, thank you uh, and the government for providing uh, these pieces of equipment. In addition to that, we have been having uh, a number of conversations on other projects that we, we are working on. And we are extremely grateful that we have now, in, in some ways, re-energized the projects that deals with the three regional hospitals, uh, West Demerara Hospital, Saudi Hospital, and the Bartika Hospital. I have had an opportunity over the last couple of days to visit the West Demerara Hospital. And while the health workers there are doing a, a a great job in the circumstances. It is a hospital that we really need uh, to rebuild in, in many ways. Um, 
and to make sure that we have the right environment to provide the kinds of patient care. And I would imagine the same uh, would be in Saudi and Bartica Hospital. These are long-standing institutions. They have been there for many years, but now we have to modernize it. Mm -hmm. And um, you can appreciate the efforts to modernize it um, would take a lot of resources. And we are really happy that we can move forward this project because it is not, uh, it is something that would help us to provide quality care in these regions. And there's no reason why somebody in one of these regions should not get the same level of care that they are currently receiving at Georgetown Hospital. So that is something that uh, we are very pleased about, that we are able to do. And, um, and we want to thank you for that. In addition to the project that we have started talking about these hospitals, uh, we have had some initial conf uh, conversations on the electric.